Hello appraisers, this is Brandon with Spark for Appraisers and in this video we're going to be covering paired sales analysis and this is specifically regarding how we're going to calculate it in our adjustment tool. So what you're looking at now is a homemade grid that has three properties in it and essentially I just want to use this to give you a brief explanation of how paired sales is going to be calculated and then I'm going to show you a little bit more in depth using Excel regarding how it's going to calculate it and actually give you examples of real data from real market analyses showing how paired sales works. Okay, so first, as you can see, and I know most of you already understand what paired sales is and what it means, but I'm just going to briefly cover it. Basically, we have three properties here and we have just a few pieces of information on each property. We got the sale price, the lot size, the livable area, and the garage count. And then down here I have a section for adjusted price. So the way it's going to work is the adjustment tool is going to go through and look for any matches of properties that are basically perfectly matched or identical properties except for the feature that we're currently analyzing. Okay, so first let's talk about lot size. So when Spark is analyzing lot size and using the paired sales method, what it's going to do first is it's going to look at all of your properties and it's going to take the very first one and it's going to compare that one against the next one and say, okay, is this property identical except for lot size? So are all the other features the same except for lot size? And it will allow you to give it tolerances. So for example, if you want to consider anything that's plus or minus 50 square feet or plus or minus 3% or whatever it is to be similar, then it will allow you to do that. So in this case, property one and property two, they are within our tolerance, which is in this case, plus or minus 50 square feet. It's within 50 square feet. So those are the same. And for garage count, there is no tolerance, meaning it has to be identical. So yes, these two garage counts are identical. And now I know this is really dumbed down. We don't have any other features of the property in here, like quality, condition, view, location, all that stuff. But just, just for this example here, these two properties are identical, except for lot size. Their lot size is not within 500 square feet. So these are basically matched pairs. And then we can use these to calculate a lot size adjustment. So we'll say, okay, these properties, I don't need to make any adjustments to them. They're identical and 5,000 square feet is the lot size difference and the difference in sale price is 10,000. So in this case, I would say, all right, no other adjustments are necessary. So my adjusted price is 200,000 and my adjusted price is 210,000. And we'll say, all right, so we have a difference of $10,000 in those two sale prices. And the only other difference is 5,000 in square feet, which is that we divide them and that gives us $2 a square foot. And so the adjustment tool is going to take that dollar amount, that $2 a square foot and log it. And then it will look at the next set of properties, property one versus property three. And then it will go through and say, okay, are these identical except for lot size? And in this case, no, they're not. So this is not a matched pair. And then it will look at property one versus property four and say, okay, are these identical except for lot size? And then do the same thing. And so it might get something like, okay, well, we got a lot size adjustment of $2 and we got a lot size adjustment of $3 and we got a lot size adjustment of $1. And then it will take the median or take the average. And then it will, of all of those paired sales, and it will give you the result. And in this case, it would be $2. And so then it would say, okay, so the lot size adjustment is $2 for that property because it would find all the matched pairs, take the average of all of them and take the median of all of them and then show you both of those results. And so in this case, just in this example, it would be $2 a square foot would be your potential lot size adjustment. And then of course, you'd be able to see all your other adjustments like for different methods of regression, sensitivity, group data, whatever it happens to be. And let's just say you decided, yes, it's $2 a square foot. That's great, you decided that. And I know a lot of you will think, well, if I load 50 properties into this thing and 
I'm not going to get, there's not that many matched pairs, but you would actually be surprised because what happens is you compare property one to two, then one to three, then one to four, then one to five, until it goes through all 50. Then it compares property two to property three, then property two to property four, and property two to property five, and so on through all 50. And then property three to all of them, then property four to all of them, until it goes through all 50 against all the others. And so you actually get a large number of potential matched pairs. Of course, all of those aren't going to be matched pairs, obviously, but you'd be surprised how many actually are matched pairs, given your tolerances that you get to set. And of course, you don't have to have tolerances either. You could make, you could force them to be identical properties. But if you set a tolerance, usually there's going to be a decent number of matched pairs when you do all those comparisons. And then this tool is basically just going to give you the median and average of all those, and then present that data to you for you to do what you want with it. And let's just say in this case, you decide that the lot size adjustment is going to be $2 a square foot. But then what you're also going to be able to do is then say, okay, I know my lot size adjustment is $2 a square foot. Now I want you to use that information and tell me about GLA. And so what Spark can do is you can have the true paired sales which is what we just talked about, where they're actually matched pairs using your tolerances. And then we'll also have what we call adjusted paired sales. And so what that means is it takes your $2 a square foot, applies it to any properties that might not be matched pairs, and that might make them a matched pair. And so let me just show you that. So in this case, let's say we're now analyzing GLA, and we already told the tool that $2 a square foot is the accurate adjustment for lot size. Then, even though property one and property three are not matches, perfect matched pairs for GLA, because the lot size is not the same and the GLA is not the same, so those are not matched pairs. However, if we know that the lot size adjustment is $2 a square foot, then we can just do $2 times the difference in GLA, and so that's a 2,000 square foot difference in I'm sorry, in lot size, a 2,000 square foot difference in lot size. We multiply that by the $2, and then we get an adjustment of positive $4,000. And so now this is 189,000, and we compare that when we're looking at property one versus property two, Okay, this one we've already done. Then we do property one versus property three. When we're looking at GLA, yep, those lot, those GLAs are not the same, so that's good. Everything else now that we've adjusted for lot size is the same. So this is a, you could call it a faux paired sale. In this tool, we're calling it an adjusted paired sale. And so we've adjusted for the lot size difference of 4,000. So now this is a paired sale based on that method. The only thing different is the GLA. And we can see the GLA difference here is 200 square feet. So now we can get our calculator out again and we can say, okay, so we know the adjusted price difference is $200,000 minus $189,000. That's $11,000 difference. And we divide by the difference in GLA and that gives us our potential GLA adjustment. So now we can say that the GLA adjustment based on the comparison of property one versus property three gives us $55 a square foot. And then of course, this tool is gonna go through and it'll say, uh, let's here, let's do this. It'll say the GLA, we got 55 from that comparison. Um, we don't get anything from comparing property one to two because basically their GLAs are identical based on our tolerance. And then it would do property one against property four, and then one against five, and then two against three, and then two against four, and then two against five, and so on until it does all those comparisons. And then it takes, the again, the average and median of all those, and it presents that information to you. So you'll not only get it using what is true paired sales, but also adjusted paired sales. And here, I'll just write that up here. So it will also give you adjusted paired sales. And then of course, the average and median of all those. So you have all of that information, ba both based on true paired sales and adjusted paired sales. And so in this case, what that also means is that 
we can now compare property two to property three that we see on the screen here. So let's go ahead and do that. Okay, so we blank that out. And now essentially property two and property three are not perfect matched pairs, but they are, you could consider them adjusted matched pairs, meaning that now that we know for certain that we wanna adjust for lot size at $2 a square foot, because that's what the U or the appraiser decides, then we can say, okay, at $2 a square foot, 15,000 square feet minus 8,000 square feet, that leaves us with 7,000, 7,000 times $2. And so we can say, okay, we are going to make a positive $14,000 adjustment. And that's going to put this at 199. Let's go ahead and add our dollar signs to these ones. Okay, so now we have for the comparison of property two versus property three, we've got 210,000 and 199. We've evened out the lot size here. So essentially those are matched because we've adjusted for the lot size based on what we said it is. And now we have this $11,000 difference in sale price, which is in theory due to this 250 square foot GLA difference. Cause that's the only other difference in these properties. So now, we can do that math and let's go grab the calculator. All right. And we'll take the 210,000 minus 199. That gives us the $11,000. And then we divide by the 250 square foot difference. And that gives us $44. So now with this property, we have $44 here. So write that there. And then we'd keep on going through all the properties that we uploaded to see if there's any other matches. But if this was our only two, and hopefully we'd have more than that, then we would do um, the average of 55 and 44, or the median of 55 and 44. And that gives us $50 a square foot. And so that would be the result that the adjustment tool would provide you along with all the others, all the other different methods of regression, sensitivity, uh, depreciated cost, and then you choose what you want the actual adjustment to be given all that data. And that's the way it works. All right, so now let's get into uh, a more thorough description and we'll go ahead and do that in Excel. Okay, so here's our example from Excel. Now this is 30 properties that I loaded in. These are actual sales and what would be considered competing properties from a year or two ago for a specific neighborhood. Uh, in my area. And this is the raw data from my MLS. And I went through and I kind of translated it all. And so everything to the right of this thick red line here is the translated data where I took and converted it into what it should be. This is similar to how the adjustment tool handles it. It takes all the raw data and converts it into what it should be. You can see it's also accounting for things like REO sales. So obviously that property is never going to be a match for anything because there's nothing else that's an REO sale. Um, and then here, and this is going to look really ugly, but basically this is where I actually did the math. And you know, you could actually do this yourself. It's kind of tedious and time consuming, but basically what I did is, and let's go back a little bit. I'm going to go to the left a little bit here so you can see. Uh, I set up some tolerances. So basically for GLA, I set a 50 square foot tolerance. So anything that's within 50 square foot is considered identical. And then with REO and short sale, you can see there is no tolerance there, meaning those have to be identical matches. For stories, again, zero, it has to be an identical match. For garage count, has to be identical match. For carport, identical. For lot size, I set a thousand square feet. So as long as it's within a thousand square feet, it's considered a match. Year built, five years, bedrooms within one, and baths has to be identical. And so basically what we did then is we took all of those sales, and again, we're analyzing 30 sales. And if you analyze 30 sales, that's a potential 435 matched pairs. That's the maximum number of matched pairs you could have from 30 sales. Now what we actually got is 76 matched pairs. So right here, this first column, and this is running it through with property one as the main property, 
property two is the main property, property three, four, five, and so on until all those comparisons are done for all 30 properties, basically. Um, and so let's go back again. So what it does is in this first column, it looks to find perfect matches. So it finds those perfect matches. And then what it does in the second column is it looks to see if, since we're currently analyzing just GLA, that's all that we're analyzing here, when we're, since we're analyzing GLA, it looks to see if that property has a different GLA than the property it's analyzing, because obviously we, it need, that is the one feature that has to be different for the matched pairs to work. And then it does the math to calculate what the adjustment would be per square foot based on just that one matched pair. And so in this case, this is comparing property one against, it looks like property one, two, three, four. And so property one against property four ended up with as a match and it resulted in negative $24 per square foot. Obviously that's a silly number, but that was the answer. And then property one versus property five was a perfect match and that gave $171. And then this one was not a match, then this one was, and so on. And so it calculates all those numbers, and then it does property two against property three, four, five, six, seven, all the way up to 30. Then property three up to 30, property four up to 30. And you can see in here, there were no matches at all for these properties. And then as we get over to seven, there were a few matches, and then eight had quite a few matches, and then nine only had a couple in the end, 10 had none in the end, 11 had several, and so that's kind of the way it moves on along the board here until you basically compare every single property against every other property, and that's what we're left with once we get to here. And this is what, I'm going to zoom out a little bit so you can see everything. Actually, I'm going to zoom out a lot. These are all the calculations from here over to here were all the calcula calculations that had to be performed. And then what we did is we took the median of all the final numbers, which is every other, whoops, every other column. So it basically went and got all those, got every other column, and it took the average of all of those and the median of all those. And now I'm gonna zoom back in so you can actually see the results. And this is what we were left with. These are the results right here. So. We had a total of 30 sales, 435 potential matches. The actual number of matches was 76, and that left us with an average price per square foot of $56 and a median of 61. And that's using all the data, not throwing out any outliers or anything, which are things that our tool will allow you to do as well. But um, this is basically what you're left with, and that's all the math that's basically going on. Now, this is based on true matched pairs uh, based on the tolerances that you, the appraiser, set. It's not using any of the stuff we talked about where you can have adjusted pairs, where you can say, okay, well, I know lot size is worth $2 a square foot, so account for that, and that might give you more matched pairs. Um, or the same thing with like, I know the adjustment for a swimming pool, so go ahead and assume that, and then that might give you more matched pairs. This is not based on any of that adjusted paired stuff. It's just on true matched pairs. And that's the way it's going to work. Hopefully that all made sense. If you have any questions about that or I wasn't clear on something, feel free to reach out. And thanks for watching.